Hi, welcome to Teardown Tuesday. We've got ourselves a power analyzer today. Haven't had a look inside a power analyzer before, so should be a little bit interesting. This is a Voltec PM300, and if you're like me, you haven't heard of Voltec before. They were sold off to uh, Tektronix some time ago, and Tektronix still do um, sell some of the Voltec uh, power analyzers, the PA1000 and the PA. 4,000 you can still buy them. But anyway, this is a nice little bit of kit which I picked up at an auction and it is a three-phase power analyzer. So there's the voltage and current inputs and it's got a nice big graphical display on it as well which shows all sorts of stuff including all three channels at once. It even has a waveform mode that can actually show uh, the waveform and of course it measures a whole range of uh, you know power stuff not only for mains although you know it goes up to like 500 or 1000 volts or something like that um, but it can also do uh, smaller voltages and currents as well multiple ranges and it's a really nice bit of kit and of course it can measure everything you know we can measure voltage current uh, phase angle real power apparent power can even do inrush current which is really handy it can uh, has a ballast mode where it can do you know high frequency ballast outputs and ah oh, all sorts of stuff, peak and averages and all sorts of things like that. So really very handy power analyzer for really, uh, you know, measuring the power consumption of products because it's not that easy. You know, you get one of these cheap ones you buy on eBay for 10, 15 bucks, Ugh, gives you a rough indication, but you know, these things really go to town. Uh, pretty accurate too, 0.1% on pretty much all the ranges So um, and all the uh, functions. So pretty awesome. Should be interesting inside. Let's take a look. Not hugely complex, but hey, you never know. So you know what we say here on the EV blog, don't turn it on, take it apart. Now I'm not exactly sure how old this unit is, but uh, it has a calibration date on the back of 2004, so it's at least a 10 year old uh, design, but still pretty kick ass by modern standards. You get a 0.1% three phase power analyzer with all the bells and whistles. And the good thing about learning about uh, new brands like this uh, Voltec one that I haven't heard of before, you add them to your eBay watch list. I've got a list of, you know, m of the more obscure name uh, products out there, and you just keep that eBay watch list and an alert pops up if, uh, you know, something on the market comes up. Now this is actually an ex-military unit, same as the oscilloscopes I uh, scored recently, but it came in a nice padded uh, custom Pelican uh, case, genuine Pelican case, and it looks like it's hardly ever been used. Got some writing on the front here, but yeah, I think it just sat in a warehouse for like 10 years. There it is, calibration due 2004, so I expect this to have been manufactured maybe in the early uh, 2000s or something like that. Uh, we've probably only got like calibrated once or something like that when they originally got it. And so it could be like 2003, it'd be my I guess. It's got what looks like an optional module here with the printer and uh, RS-232 interface, so you can actually get the data out of this thing. Standard IAC mains input, switchable of course, which is really handy, it's got a voltage selection uh, switch there and three separate uh, channels for your three phase uh, measurement. I've got no need for three phase measurement here of course I don't even have three phase power coming to the lab. Oh though no actually technically I do I think I have it into the switchboard but I certainly don't have any uh, three phase outlets that's for sure so I'll just use it as a uh, single channel and you can actually hook up an external uh, current you use an external current shunt and you can actually program the in but it recommends of course that you use the internal uh, current shunts for these things and they can be I'll link in the manual the user manual for this thing down below and it shows how it can be uh, configured in delta y configurations for the various phases and all sorts of stuff so very flexible input so it looks like you know what we're likely going to see inside construction probably three separate cards for this a huge baseboard in there something like that um, and maybe a separate display board on the front and uh, front panel board so I would expect these to be separate isolated they are galvanically uh, isolated so uh, the obvious well there are a couple of ways to do that either you try and uh, do it 
analog or digital. For me, if I was designing this thing, I would do it digital. So I'd have the, because these are very, you know, very precise. They're going to have a, you know, like a 16-bit converter in there or something like that. You know, it needs to be really precise um, AD conversion in these things and uh, front-end amplifiers and range switching and stuff like that. So I expect all that, including the ADCs, to be on each separate card there and then like a serial data interface to that because this thing I think uh, sound like has a 50 kilohertz bandwidth or 100 kilohertz or something like that it's not you know huge so you can just get the data over a digital serial interface and it's much easier to galvanically isolate a digital interface just using some optocuppers than it is to do it analog wise so anyway um, it could be interesting let's crack it open you bet your ass we're going to avoid the warranty Let's do it. Ah, one of the most satisfying things you could do. Look at that. Brilliant. There's a tiny little uh, fan on the base of the unit here. It doesn't really need much uh, ventilation at all because, well, yeah, there's no huge power dissipation inside this thing. It might be drawing, I don't know, you know, 10 watts or something just to power the electronics, not even. And uh, the current shunts aren't going to be dissipating much power anyway. So. There you go. Um, I expect some through-hole technology in here, of course. Probably a mix of uh, uh, through-hole and surface mount. Probably predominantly surface mount. The processor, you know, processor inside this thing. They're not going to have a huge ARM processor or anything like that. Just some sort of 8 or 16-bit micro, uh, possibly. Something like that. So, looks like we need to get the back off here. And uh, anything else? No, don't know. Okay, let's try and slide this forward. Hmm. Well, there you go. I just took out the serial uh, parallel module and, yeah, it's all through hole. So this thing could be maybe entirely through hole or mostly uh, through hole anyway. Obviously got some sort of uh, micro over there. Huge, big um, uh, through hole package very traditional style card edge connector routed into the board out in here so that that is quite a nice design if somewhat ancient uh yeah date code as i suspected 2003 there you go got ourselves an hitachi h8 so if we've got one on here eh, very likely to find a, an hitachi micro also inside uh-huh i was wondering where the other screws were there we go that's a bit sneaky no, I can't get the, get this rear bezel off because it's got, I can see under here, it's got another, th well, probably three screws up under there, but it's under the case. So I can't slide this case off forward or backward. So I'm probably just going to have to lever off one side like that. Ugh, tricky. Almost in. And uh, yeah, it did have those screws on top. So I had Buckley's chance of sliding the thing back out. So it's got to come off over like so oh man that's one tricky little mongrel but ta-da we're in well it looks like i was wrong on the uh three board uh construction there for the three different channels no we can see right through there hello looks like um what they've done is they've split it into a uh, single phase so maybe they sold a single phase unit of this and you only got the bottom board because we can see some shunts down there and the ranges for uh, phase number one you know the inputs for phase number one down here and the top board is just two additional uh, phase boards and yes the uh, single phase model is the PM 100 the manual uh, shares between those I forgot about that and uh, it's really interesting kind of uh, construction like this check out the board up in there like that there we go actually a, a connector sandwiched between the top and bottom boards here it's got card edges on both sides that's really quite fascinating and I've done the screws off there Oops. <laughs> and it looks like it's just going to pop off oops here we go Ta -da. and apart from the ah uh, the wiring we're in. There we go. So if you just got the uh, PM100 model, you just get that baseboard down the bottom. And what's kind of annoying is that they haven't really put uh, servicing thought into this. I mean, they haven't left enough lead length here for me to swing this board out completely. But I guess even then, of course, 
to actually plug this board in and get it working, you have to plug it in to this top board up in here, like this. It's got to plug into there, so it's got a sandwich construction. You can't get access to the damn board to even probe it while it's operational, or it's very difficult anyway. Yeah, real pain in the ass to service something like this. One of the first things I noticed was this little wire bodge over here going down, well, it's powering the fan. They basically got the fan directly as a red wire connected there and a black one going all the way over to the other side of the cap there and they're just bodgy soldered onto the leads of these axial uh, main output filter caps from the transformer here, almost as if the fan is an afterthought. Because if you were designing a fan in from the start, you would have put a two-pin connector on there to plug your fan into, right? So, ah, oh, beats me. Mmm. And they've put a cutout in the board here, and they've mounted what looks like, I can't get the number on that yet, it's probably a, you know, a linear reg or something, 78, yeah, I think it is a 7805, and they're using that big block down there as a heatsink. And, of course, yeah, there's nothing uh, special with the transformer there, they've used a... Uh, just a, a PCB mount mains transformer there, and, well, uh, there's a full wave bridge rectifier on the output there. There's four uh, 1N uh, 4001s there, plus some beefy uh, output filter caps, but that's it. You know, it doesn't need much power to power all this circuitry, as I said. And there you go. As we guessed, exactly the same processor used on the inside here. Hey, you know, you've already got the development tools for it. It's already in your bill of materials. Why not reuse it on the serial one as well? Even though it's uh, overkill for the serial interface card, it's probably, you know, it's good enough for something like this anyway to drive the graphical LCD display. And clearly, it speaks French. <laughs> I don't, that's for sure. And the only surface mount stuff we've got in this whole design is on, as you'd expect, on the front panel LCD. And yeah, this is not a Voltec design. They've just used an off-the-shelf module or they've got an OEM, you know, to supply them a module. And that's uh, pretty much it. The interesting part about it is that the ribbon cable goes to this vertical, I think they call it an interface board. Like, you know, it's just crazy. Why? You'll notice all the uh, pins on one side there are... Uh, shorted out, especially on that uh, top one there, but, you, like, why? And look, behind it, they've got a an unused IDC header connector there. It's just, ah, uh, it's bizarre. And in case you're wondering, no, that one can't just be plugged into there, it's actually two pins short. So that raises the bizarre question that, well, what do they do in the PM100, the one chant, one phase module? They would have to have this vertical riser board still, even though it says it's the PM300 uh, interface board there. Like, huh? What the? And on this interface board, well, just a whole bunch of 8-bit shift registers, uh, 74HC4094s, uh, and what are they? 74HC597s. Go figure in a, just a miscellaneous uh, HCO4 inverter over this side. So they're obviously uh, shifting the data in from the other two channels on the board on top, but it's just... it's bizarre. Anyway, well, we do have an 8-bit micro here, so we've got to interface everything to that 8-bit micro bus, but... Jeez. And I'm never a big fan of crystals just freestanding like that, just flapping in the breeze. You get the right vibrational mode and eh, off it's going to come. And we've got our serial interface board uh, being plugged into this card edge connector on the front panel. So there's obviously a front panel connector board in there. I'm not going to bother taking this whole thing apart just to get at that to look at, uh, you know, the front panel uh, user interface and stuff like that. Eh, boring as bat poo. It does look like, though, they've just got the all the buttons in a matrix of course are uh, the front panel coming back there's actually two of these uh, multi-way ribbon connectors going down to the front panel board behind that shield in the front now let's take a look at the interesting stuff and we're just going to have a look at one channel of this uh, top two channel board yes I have looked the other identical uh, the other channel on the other board uh, down at the base there for the PM100 it's just another duplicate of all this channel so we're only cons and these look like two identical channels so we'll just concentrate on one and no surprises for guessing exactly what I thought it would be. Uh, they're all galvanically isolated. Check this out. You can see the split in the ground plane. Totally separate ground planes. 
between all the channels. Looks like we've got some input attenuation here. We'll take over that. Very interesting looking uh, current shunt on the input there. We've got some protection. We've got some interesting looking uh, transformers here. We'll have a look at those in a second. And there's our uh, galvanic isolation using three optocouplers there. So we're just getting serial data out of this thing and that's exactly what you'd expect. Now if you were paying attention you would have realized that there's no power, there's no other wires come into this board. Ordinarily in an isolated design like this, for simplicity's sake, the main transformer, mains transformer on the input would have separate winding, isolated winding taps for each of these and you, you know you'd have a connector over here or something or you know plugs in to each module coming from each isolated tap on the transformer but they haven't bothered to do that. All of the power is coming in via this card edge connector here and so aha uh -huh, how are they getting the power across? It's not coming across the optocouplers bingo it's coming across these two transformers up here. Little hand wound jobs. Interesting. And this is very very interesting. You can tell it's uh, power transfer by the big beefy tracks on one side. It looks like they might have a uh, switching transistor here so they're obviously uh, driving this at uh, you know switching the thing and then they've just got you know this one's actually got uh, two turns on it this one's only got a single little turn and look they're actually using two in series like that look this wind in here is just directly connected to that wind and you can see the traces going like that so look at that it's a two uh, well a effectively a two-stage transformer there going to the other side and of course it's a dead giveaway they're just doing some filtering and then yeah some rectification and then some uh, filtering there probably got some uh, voltage local voltage regulation in there sort of a TO92 you know 7805s or something like that happening but that's rather interesting look at that they've gone to quite a bit of trouble there to custom spec and wind these transformers and they've used two of them. So why they've gone with two like that in series you know your guess is as good as mine really. I, What did they not uh, get the uh, voltage specification they were looking for the isolation specification with just the one? Huh. And there's our switching transistor on the primary side it's a 2SK940 so they're just doing crude switching of the uh, primary side there and well they just rectify the output of the secondary and Bob's your uncle. So it's very crude and very inefficient but you know hey it gets the job done whatever floats your boat. And no surprises for guessing for finding some pretty beefy uh, optocouplers here from Avago. Love that name. Ah, Avago you mug. Love it. Um, in these cases, these are uh, 10 megabit, so pretty darn quick. Uh, tw I think uh, 3,500 volts RMS uh, optocouplers with 5 uh, kilovolts per millisecond transient voltage on them. So, you know, really pretty beefy optocouplers. Well, I was way off the mark on the ADC. Look at this. Pretty old school. Two of them, as you'd expect. One for the voltage, one for the uh, current on each channel. But very old school AD7575 ADCs. Jeez, I used this, these donkeys years ago. 8-bit uh, successive approximation converters. Really nothing fancy at all. Although, I guess all they need is 8-bit uh, resolution on this thing because it does have uh, various ranges. It's got like 8 voltage and current ranges or something like that. Speaking of which, the range switching, nothing fancy going on here at all. Just some 74HC4053 analog muxes. Uh, TL071, is it? Yes. That's a TL071 op amp and another uh, 74, you know, 4000 series mux. I mean, geez, nothing happening here at all. So this is pretty interesting. I mean, it obviously got two paths here. One on this side here is for the voltage. The voltage comes in. We'll take a look at that in a second. The other side here is for the current. We can see the big current shunt down the bottom. Basically identical uh, paths like this. And they just got that, uh, you know, 4000 um, and tight series analog switching and various op amp gain ranges. So clearly what they're, this is an auto ranging unit. So clearly what they're doing is just at the higher uh, gain levels, they're just um, letting the other the op amps uh, you know overload and uh, saturate and then switching between uh, those as it 
goes down in ranges. So they're obviously getting away with that. Nothing fancy here at all. It's not like they got, you know, a relay switch in or anything like that. Really, you know, basic configuration stuff. And the input here, very basic attenuation. They've just got four dropper resistors on each leg here, basically attenuating the input signal here down to bugger all uh, to go into this uh, MUX here. So, you know, really, no matter how high the uh, transient voltage, it's not going to damage the input there. That's why we basically don't see any input protection. If we have a look around here, you just don't need it because you're just attenuating the input so much. I mean, there's nothing on the input protecting that at all. And as far as our current shunt goes here, well, look at this. This is a fancy pantsy. It's an SMD current shunt, I guess you could call it, because it is actually, uh, you know, a soldered, although surface mount, onto large pads over here. And that's super duper wide. What is that, like, you know, 30 millimeters uh, wide? That's going to be a low Tempco metal, of course. And it looks like they've made no attempt at all to actually uh, trim that. Trimming would be done in uh, software afterwards. So, yeah, they're not going to dick around and laser cut that or you know solder little bits on there to sort of you know change the resistance a minute amount something like that yes that is a cutout down in the boards there so that can extend down below the board and of course there's no fusing on this puppy at all it's just yet yeah, straight into there look big beefy blade terminals there soldered directly into our current shunt and if you're wondering what this uh, circuitry here this is the external current shunt uh, input so they've just got added some protection there there's a thermistor on the input there dead giveaway th1 looks like they've got a bodged uh, ceramic cap on there just for some uh, extra noise suppression there hey if you're going to bodge it do it nice they've put heat shrink tubing over the leads there and uh, a couple of back-to-back -back diodes in a series resistor there so that's just a feed in and external shunt voltage if you want to so anytime you're feeding in external uh, voltages like that you have to add some input protection and some noise suppression and on every uh, back pedal connection there for the voltage and current inputs, they got uh, noise suppression to ground, high voltage uh, ceramic cap there, 6 kilovolts, uh, 22 nanofarads by the looks of it. And look at those ceramic noise suppression caps down to earth as far as the eye can see, all the way through there, every back panel c connector, except for the external uh, current shunt input as we saw, which is uh, taken care of on the main board as we just saw before. And right next to our ADC there, we have ourselves our voltage reference. There you go, little uh, two-pin shunt. And the voltage regulators on the output of the voltage isolation that we uh, saw before for the power coming in, eh, no surprises, as I guess, 78 LO5s. And of course, make that a split supply with the 79 LO5 negative. So you might still be wondering, the input configuration here, voltage and current, they're uh, obviously not uh, galvanically isolated, so how does that work? Well, of course, the entire channel here is galvanically isolated by the uh, by the transformer over here, this switching transformer that provides the positive and negative 5 volt rails for all the logic, but basically what they're doing here is uh, they're referencing everything to the current shunt here. So the current shunt would effectively be the reference voltage and because we've got such a large input attenuation here on the voltage side, uh, you can pretty much do whatever you want on the voltage inputs here and uh, pretty much not blow anything on the input stage. That's why you don't find any protection in there as I said before. And of course you wouldn't be able to do that if you only had single side attenuation here. If you were, say, referencing one of the voltage uh, terminals, it would have to be common referenced to the current shunt down here. But because they've got two separate uh, high voltage attenuators on the input effectively, eh, this voltage you can hook it up wherever you want over the entire operational range of this thing and you're not going to blow anything. And then the data output side of our ADC, as I said, it's an 8-bit uh, parallel output, so they're just uh, whacking that into some shift registers, and of course we don't have enough uh, bits there, so they're just uh, feeding that over the optocoupler, and, well, that's it. Nothing fancy whatsoever. Oh, I forgot to mention there is a uh, trim pot down here. I'm not sure exactly what they're uh, trimming. That's only in the voltage path. They don't have a similar trimmer pot in the current path so not exactly sure what they're doing there um, you can calibrate this thing in uh, software anyway to um, you know there's a whole procedure in the manual to do that
So there you go. I hope you found that uh, relatively interesting. That was the Voltec PM300 power analyzer. Well, and it was a little bit different uh, than I expected. This is clearly with all through-hole technology and the ancient uh, Hitachi processor, stuff like that, you know, it's based on a much older design and they've just carried that over into future designs because, you know, this thing, well, it was manufactured around uh, that uh, 2003 uh, date or something early uh, 2000s they've only manufactured uh, this is serial number 2000 or something so it hasn't manufactured too many before that so you know it's like late 90s design uh, at best so I'm surprised we didn't see any surface mount in there but that's what you get in these products the designers of these uh, products if they're familiar with all the stuff before they're not going to change everything when just for a new model and don't oh let's all go surface mount well why you know it's worked before all our footprints all our pack here in our CAD package we'll just run the damn thing again heck even our layout can probably reuse a layout from an existing product or something like that but yeah Anyway, um, there's a very crude sort of uh, ADC front end, just 8-bit ADCs that fixed uh, or fixed gain ranges with the you know, 4000 series MUX on there to switch. They're obviously overloading the other ranges when you switch low, but eh, it doesn't matter. It's just internally clamped and it's all just fine. And you can manually uh, auto uh, switch between those uh, ranges seamlessly because this thing just continuously samples all the time, of course, at front, you know, like at 100 kilohertz or some fixed uh, sample rate or something like that. It does that to be able to do the uh, transient capture and all that sort of stuff so actually collect the data and then uh, dump it or uh, display the waveform at a later date so it's got to be able to do that auto range switching and that's just a crude easy way to do it and with the uh, voltage input they don't even need any uh, you know any protection or clamping on the input just attenuate the buggery out of the voltage input that's it I don't know I expected a little bit more complexity from all that but eh it is what it is. There you go. It obviously quite it works. It's really quite uh, accurate and professional. This is a professional level product. It's not something that you'd uh, buy on eBay. It's from a company that specializes in these sorts of uh, power analyzers and they've probably been designing them since before I was born. I don't know. Anyway, now it's owned by Tektronix and the Danaher Group. Eh, groan. <gasps> Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to discuss it, the uh, forum links are down below. That's the best place to do it. And as always, I will have high-res photos of this teardown available on evblog.com. And the link for that will be down below as well. So go there and check out the photos. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you next time.